Spring is almost here, and so it is time for phase two greenhouse master plan to commence. I've wanted a greenhouse for almost a decade, but I started to think it wasn't going to be possible with the amount of wind and hail we get here in Wyoming. We almost gave up last year until we came across Greenhouse Megastore, which makes some of the toughest greenhouses in existence. They not only had a kit that could handle our crazy hail, but they also had one that was rated for 115 mile an hour winds. Perfect. So we ordered the kit and put it together late last summer. So we finished the greenhouse in early September of last year. And so basically we just got it up. I planted my few little rows and we knew that we do the rest of the work right now, spring 2021. The tricky part has been figuring out what we wanna do, number one, what it's gonna look like, how to lay it out, but also trying to coordinate that with planting times because I have some things planted here already. I'm itching to get some seedlings in the ground. So it's all hands on deck to get this wrapped up and set up before I need to start doing the serious planting in here. We're going to have five or six beds along this side with a 16 inch walkway in between each one and then like a two foot walkway here and then a five or six foot wide bed all the way down the middle of the greenhouse with another walkway and then five or six beds over here. Really, we're only trying to get it mostly level in here right now because we're gonna trench our water lines in before we build the actual beds. And once we build the actual beds, then we'll put everything in perfectly level and square and all that. Then we'll, we'll put our final grading on. Right now, we're just trying to get close. We'll be putting the hydrant in later once the snow melts and we can like get around the yard. But for now, at least we'll have the lines laid. We'll fix the beds all up and then I can start planting. The one sad part about this part of the process is that we have to trench right through the spinach and the kale. It has to happen for the rest of the greenhouse to come together, so here we go. in the office all day and wanted to see what progress looked like. So we got sprinkler box put in, some lovely trenches. We're just gonna be using simple pine boards to line the beds. Um, these aren't gonna be raised beds, they're basically just gonna be in-ground beds, but we want a clear delineation so we're not trumping on the soil and everything just stays really tidy. Probably put like bark or something in the walkways, I think. So it's Saturday, our day off from school. Our work schedule is a little different, so we're going to try to devote some concentrated time to the greenhouse today. The guys did a good job getting sprinklers system laid yesterday. And now we get to start laying out some beds. So we got these lines backfilled in. So there's those nice long lines down the middle of each bed. A little hard to see now once they're all filled in. And now we're just working on these walkways. We would debate it, are we gonna do mulch or are we gonna do brick? And we decided to go with the brick just because it's gonna be a lot cleaner, easier to keep tidy. So I think it's gonna look really good.
day like 529 of the greenhouse project or something like that. I'm realizing that this is a little bit more of a learning curve than I thought in terms of knowing how to manage seedlings and seeds when it gets so dang hot in here. It's gotten really warm the last few days, 70, 75 during the day, and it's blazing hot in here. And I have killed a number of seedlings because I didn't get them watered enough. So I have a lot to learn with this whole greenhouse growing gig. These were some of my victims. I just missed them by a couple hours and they fried. Planted some of my sprouted basement seed potatoes in this bed over the weekend. Just kind of gonna see how it goes. This is really new to me, this whole process of planting this early and figuring out what to plant in a greenhouse. I'm just experimenting this year. I'm just gonna see what happens. Okay, so it's a few weeks after I initially started recording this video. I really, really, really wanted to have everything done and be able to give you a grand reveal. We've made a ton of progress, but it's still not quite completely done. So I'll show you what we have working so far. The guys have been working super hard on the beds and the walkways and I am in love. We ended up going with these paper bricks instead of mulch and I'm really glad we did. I think it gives that uh, old vintage look and it's gonna be a lot less messy. We have the sprinklers coming up in the middle of each bed and then we'll attach some sprinkler line here hopefully soon. Right now I'm just watering by hand. So this is the south wall over here. So I'm gonna be planting my shorter vegetables that are lower to the ground. And then anything that's more permanent, like maybe a citrus tree eventually or something like that, will go over here on the north wall. And as it grows, it won't be creating any shade for the shorter crops. I'm envisioning this middle set of three beds to be my tomato area. So I have tomatoes started in the house right now. We'll plant these in here in about a month and then run twine up to the ceiling to let them grow up the twine and save space and make them a little happier. Now with a lot of these plants like the potatoes, our goal will be to harvest them out probably in June or so and then plant something else in their place or leave those beds empty for a little while until we're ready to plant our fall crops. So there will be a lot of rotation happening in here. Um, even though it's snowing outside right now, the greenhouse has stayed around 60 degrees, so it feels amazing in here and the cabbage is loving it. The more I'm out here, the more I'm thinking that this space will become our primary growing space because of our volatile weather. And we'll still plant our outdoor garden, of course, during the summer, but our growing season is so short. And this structure is going to allow us to grow so much more throughout the year, just like people in normal climates would be able to. Now, like everything we do on our homestead, our goal is to make this as efficient as possible because the more we increase our homestead efficiency, the smoother things run, the more productive things are, and the less headache I have. So we're not quite done out here. Here is what is left and I will keep updating you with the progress as we go along. So we're gonna to continue to extend the bricks out into this area and this is gonna be our potting area. Eventually we'll probably have some tables. You hear that, it was the snow falling off the roof. Uh, anyway, we're gonna have some potting tables here for our seed starts down the road, this will all be brick. We'll have a nice potting table with pots and potting soil organized and pretty. So it is still our goal to have geothermal out here, but I'm holding on to that goal loosely. And if it doesn't happen in 2021, I'm not gonna freak out. We can just maybe do it next year instead. When the time does come, we'll dig a big hole on the outside of the greenhouse, bury our pipes, and then pipe them in here along this north wall and have fans that's circulating air to keep it a balmy 50 degrees all winter long. We're also going to finish up our irrigation system because right now I've been dragging the hose out here every day and I know as we get more into summer I'm going to be losing my oomph to do that. So I'm going to try to automate that as much as possible. And speaking of automation, Christian also wants to automate the vents. In the summer this is going to get blazing hot and if we don't vent it properly everything will die. So I would like to have these automated or controlled with a thermostat 
So it's not dependent on me because I'll probably kill everything if that's the case. So if you are looking for some creative ways to extend your growing season or boost your garden's productivity, check out Greenhouse Megastore. I cannot recommend them highly enough. They don't just have greenhouses. They also have cold frames and hoop houses and low tunnels and all sorts of cool things that'll help you get the most bang for your buck in your garden no matter where you live. And I've left a link for them down in the show notes.